so the health secretary is announcing £200 million to see the NHS through the winter. But with junior doctors and uh, consultants staging the first ever joint strike action, massive staff vacancies. Where does that leave Rishi Sunak's pledge to cut waiting lists? The health secretary, Steve Barclay, joins us now. Very good morning to you, Mr Barclay. Uh, the news this morning is that morning. ambulance crews lost two million hours last year waiting outside hospitals. I mean, it, it seems that you put a drop of money in, the problem's not getting better. Well, this is part of a, a wider package of measures and we had a summit with the Prime Minister uh, Downing Street yesterday. It's the third uh, of these meetings with health leaders and, and there's a range of things. So you mentioned ambulances. We've halved uh, the category two times, the key sort of measure of ambulances. So we're making progress, but I absolutely recognise there's more to do, and that's why we're putting an extra 5,000 permanent beds within hospitals. It's also why, in response to something that many of your listeners have said they want to see, is the ability to recover mm. at home after an operation. So we're putting in place 10,000 hospital-at-home places where you have the safety net of support but can enable people to leave hospital uh, sooner. And that's making progress. We brought down the number of what's called delayed discharges, patients ready to leave hospital by about two and a half thousand okay, Mr. since Barclay, the start sorry of the to year, interrupt. and that in but turn frees yeah. up capacity for ambulances. Okay, yeah. the delays have increased since you've been in government. It feels to those using the NHS that we have a system which is not making progress. It's getting worse. Waiting lists at record highs. We have one hundred and sixty-five thousand social care vacancies in England up more than 50% from 2020, 2021. There are an estimated 112,000 NHS England posts currently unfilled and 40,000 nursing vacancies in England. That doesn't feel like progress. Well, we are making progress. I've given an indication in terms of ambulance response times, the extra capacity that we're putting in place, the 119 community diagnostic centres that we're putting in place so we can get more tests uh, and scans delivered, particularly up. in You're the community. Now, you mentioned up. staffing. You mentioned staffing. Well, there's huge demand in the system, absolutely, and uh, we're still dealing with the, the consequences of both COVID uh, and, as we look to winter, often high flu uh, as well. But you mentioned staffing. We've got 6,000 uh, more doctors this year than last year. We've got over 16,000 more nurses this year than last year. Over 45,000 more nurses compared to 2019 uh, before the pandemic. So we are recruiting more staff. I mean, likewise, you mentioned social care. We're recruiting, in particular, internationally, more staff into social care. So the numbers are increasing. Uh, and that is also why we're investing more, not just the 200 million of extra funding today, why are we so uh, but behind, also the wider investment into social why care are we so that we made behind, in the summer. Particularly in social care, almost one in 10 posts is currently unfilled. You can't get discharged from hospital in many cases unless you have a social care plan in place at home. And if you've got that many vacancies, those ambulances are going to carry on waiting outside hospitals. Well, that's why we boosted our recruitment, particularly uh, internationally. And I the touched on the fact that we are making 50%. progress, but I absolutely recognise... Well, I recognise there's more to do, but you mentioned uh, discharge. Uh, there's 2,500 fewer patients waiting to leave hospital now than at the start of the year. So progress is being made. And the reason we brought health leaders together was to look at what we can now sooner to give the NHS and local government leaders more time to prepare okay. for winter. One of the things they've raised with me is that in the past, often these measures are announced late. So we're giving people the funding earlier. The Chancellor has invested more in social care at the autumn statement, right. a £7.5 billion increase into social care. Okay. Uh, and we're recruiting more, including internationally. Mr so Barclay. A lot more capacity is going in. But yeah, absolutely right. There's a lot of challenges in the system. As you know, one of our colleagues uh, who's singing alongside us, Kate Garraway, is front and centre at the, the, the issues with social care at the moment because she's having to care for her husband, Derek, who is still struggling post uh, COVID. I'm just going to throw over to Kate because I understand that Kate's much more experienced just in terms of understanding the vagaries of what's going on with social care. And I know that you would like to speak to Mr. Barclay about, about this as a, as a, as a 
an experience of your own? Yes, I would. And I'd actually like to get in touch mm. with you privately. I don't want to ambush you on air, but I have been trying to contact you and I have been trying to contact Helen Waitley as well and haven't been able to. I have been able to contact your equivalents on the shadow mm. side and they, I have met with them and talked to them. I'd like to come and talk to you because um, I... Not about Derek, by the way. This is not trying to get something for him. Um, mm. This is about representing millions of people mm. across the country who, like me every day, in one hand, feel like they are holding the life of their loved one, mm. and in the other hand, I don't want to cry, are just punching and punching away at a system, and it isn't about money, actually. It is about... Well, I've got five points that I'd love to meet with you if you would return some of my attempts to contact you mm -hmm. uh, or Helen Waitley as well to talk to you about it because it's not just social care, it's also health care and the way it's interrelating. So um, I mean, it would something... be wonderful if you could because okay. then it would give you an opportunity to talk freely and openly and then hopefully we could come up with something good. Well, first, Kay, it's the first I've learned that you've been trying to reach out to me, so that message hadn't got to me, so I can absolutely confirm, be very happy to okay. meet. So we will uh, pick this up after the interview and set that meeting up. Uh, and perhaps just to give an illustration, yesterday, um, a another case, a, a very troubling case, which I know you've covered on the programme uh, in terms of Mary P Mills uh, and the tragic loss of her 13-year-old daughter, Martha, and I met mm. Mary P yesterday to, to hear from her directly about her experience their experience as a family. Uh, I've commissioned NHS England through the Patient Safety Commission, Henrietta Hughes, to work at pace to respond to the issues uh, that come out of the case of what happened with Martha. So, so that was one of the meetings yesterday. It's the first I've been made aware, Kate, that you've been seeking a meeting. Of course, be keen to, to work with you. Uh, and I'm more widely looking at how we give patients much more uh, and their families much more voice yeah. within the NHS. And, and that's one of the key lessons out of the Countess of Chester. It's one of the lessons in terms of uh, Martha's case. Uh, and it's also the case in terms of social care. I want to give the patient voice uh, to ensure that is much more heard within our NHS. Yeah. Uh, and I'd be very happy to meet and discuss that with you. I think that would be uh, really, really important because, of course, you have first-hand experience of what it's been like. So yeah. when Kate can talk to you about it, she'll be able to share her experience. Yeah. And then and we can and both come back on and talk yeah. about it. How about that? Do it together. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, Steve Buck, you're very, you know, very happy to, Kate, because I know people have that direct experience and, and how we learn uh, from the experience that families are having, how we bring services together in a more integrated way. And one of the things at the summit was to have local government leaders there alongside NHS leaders. We're integrating more the NHS and social care. There's some great examples around the country. If I look at the, uh, the Jean Bishop okay. Centre in Hull, for example, which is integrating mm. care between the NHS and social care and bringing those teams together. And one yeah. of the challenges we have is how do we take those areas of good practice okay. uh, and get them adopted much more widely? We're going to have to leave it there, but we do appreciate your time, Steve Barkley, and uh, we'll look forward to hearing how that meeting goes as well. OK. And, uh, and to anybody who is shouting at the screen saying, yes. how come Kate gets special treatment? The point it is, is really. The point is, <laughs> you are able to do this yeah. In order to reflect the voices of those and who cannot get And I would take people with hurt. me. I would yeah. take people with yes. me from within the, the health system as well because okay. they have different testimonies. I'll shut up now because I can hear people shouting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kate. They're not shouting at you, don't worry. <laughs> um, what I find remarkable whenever we talk to uh, a government minister is that they talk about, you know, we're going to reflect best practice. You've been in government 13 years. Mm. 13 years!